Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM22 story, Rebuilding Helsingborg, with me, Daniel. It's part 13 today, I've largely got my voice back, and things are getting a little bit tense, because as the title gives away, despite what should be a pretty euphoric episode today, we should be back to celebrate a big qualifier in Europe that we didn't expect to be in. We should be celebrating the fact that we're top of the league, we're in the transfer window and haven't lost any big stars. But we have had a disastrous week and the knock-on effects and the consequences could last for the rest of the season. So if you're looking forward to finding out what they are and what might bring us some troubles in the weeks and months ahead, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM22 content. We had a big one with Hemel Hempstead Town yesterday. You can find that in the eye above. That save will also be back tomorrow with a pretty epic deadline day in January. You can also find in the eye above links to the Twitch channel, football podcast, merchandise store, and our brand new top three series, which started last week. And you can support the show as a channel member by clicking the join button down below if you wish. But we have got an awful lot to talk about today. We're going to do the same as we did in the last episode, show both legs of the Europa Conference qualifier. We'll play the league game in between off camera. But it is fair to say I am nowhere near as confident in this one. It should be said. We should still be celebrating because look at where Malmo are, for example. It's not been a bad season overall. But Elfsborg have closed the gap to four and we got battered in our game off camera at the weekend. But there's a lot more to it than that. If we go and have a look at the schedule, not only did we lose 4-1 to Gigardens, we also finished the game with nine men. That is because we got an early red card. We also got three injuries, two of them in the first half an hour, which in addition to the red card for a defender, meant we'd made all three subs 30 minutes in. It's also a weekend where I thought, we've got a strong enough side out, so I'm going to put some youngsters on the bench. The only experienced player was Langren. He came on at right back for Civis, who was sent off, got injured straight away. Then we were down to kids. So when we got to the second half and we lost the likes of Adam Kaid, and obviously for Civis red card, we just went a player down. So nine men we finished with, 4-1 the final result. Victor Lundberg scored the goal, and he is the subject of the knock-on potential consequences to that game. Because as a result of all of the injuries, Langren's out for the season, Kaid's out for four weeks on the left wing, and Hadjin out for a few days, Civis for a league game. We have got to a position where I had to keep him. I had to cancel the transfer where he was going to go to Kalmar. He was going to go for just under 200 grand. That couldn't happen now. Because as well as being our first choice right winger on the bench, he's going to be our first choice left winger on the bench now as well. He's also the third option up front. I couldn't let him go without a replacement. So Victor Lundberg stays. He's not happy about it. So unless we can get him a lot of football in the next month, I'd imagine he might throw his toys out the pram. We've also got an offer then to loan Anton Nilsson out. I'm going to have to think about that as well. Not great for his development to stay. So I'd probably rather keep Lundberg than him. That's the way I'm looking at it. So a few potential knock-ons as a result of that because we're not going to get 200 grand for Lundberg again. And for Nilsson, we might end up halting his development. It should be mentioned that Marcus Canto, who's out on loan this year, will be leaving at the end of his contract. We couldn't agree a new deal on reasonable terms. And look, he's okay now, but he's not got much bigger potential. So that's been a disappointing transfer window so far. We are getting some offers for Person. One of them is a transfer from Ostersund. One of them is an end of contract one. So we'll see how they work out. If we go to the transfer history as well, a few players going out on loan. Erdvin Nordfist is the most important of those. He is a left winger who, similar is two-star ability, and a bit like Nilsson, deserves football more than he deserves to rot on our bench. So we are going to have a very tricky second half of the year. We're struggling to find players that are going to really improve us. We mentioned in the last episode the director of football had made an offer for Alex Lopez. I think he probably will come in now, but... We've already got seven central midfield players. I know Johnson's likely to move on. I know Netabai's going at the end of the year, but is Lopez the solution? I'm not quite sure at the minute, but for now, might be exactly what we need. We are only a month away, of course, from our youth intake as well, so hopefully there'll be a little gem in there that can make things easier. But for now, Applewell is a very tough game. We had a brief look at them at the end of the last episode. Almost all real, the players, the likes of Daryl Janmat, Kevin Morales, albeit past their prime, but then some real good players like Simone Scuffett in goal, who at 26 is a keeper I would love to have. 
but it's going to be a tough game. That's the long and short of it. We would imagine that we're going to be underdogs. And I think if we don't have a lead in the home leg, this is probably going to be tie over. The good news is we've got some really good players on trial at the moment. But they're all those that are right at the top end with slightly high wage demands. And if we don't manage to get them over the line, then it could be a very frustrating end to the window. Still only 6,500 sold. It's so unrealistic for me. So let's see the 11 we've gone for today. And... I think we're pretty much going for full strength here. I'm looking at the bench thinking, do I do anything else? But probably not is the simple answer to that. We've got to bear in mind what we need at the weekend too. Civis, not going to be able to play at the weekend. Hadjin, struggling with injuries. And Neta by, well, two 90 minutes in a week and he'll be done. So let's stick with the 11 we've gone for here. It's Jolson between the sticks, Granath and Tursic at fullback, Weyberg and Vidal at centre half, Almajed, Henriksen and Lingman the midfield three, Lerper, Ali and Vandenherk the front three. Please give us some magic, give us something to shout about because we need to forget that weekend as quickly as possible. First leg time, the familiar names are in there, Scuffit, Jammat, Morales amongst many others. This is a proper test for our side. Probably the best side we've come up against in this series so far in a competitive fixture. And I do wonder how we'll react. Gutted the stadium's half full. I can't imagine that being realistic. Let's get into the first half and see if we can get a lead. It'd be unlikely, but we'd love it. As we're back, we're just six minutes on the clocks. Hendrickson getting the ball wide to Lerper for us. First chance to come forward. Gets to the byline as Lerper. In across the box. And Lucas Lingman taps in. Keeper caught out. It's a brilliant ball in. That is exactly what we needed at the start because I can't see how we're going to win this tie comfortably. But look at the first 10 minutes on the stats. They seem to play a tactic that suits us. It almost looked like they were playing a 4-4-2. I'm going to have to have a look in a bit, but they've set up really weirdly. They are getting into the game now, but a home lead is what we need because they're going to be hard to beat at their place as Luis Silva goes left to Pele, gets the ball into the box. That's more like what we were expecting. Quality delivery, quality finish. We looked at Beregaud last episode. We know he's very good. He's won all. 20 minutes on the clock and they're coming back into it with three shots in 10 minutes. So we've got a corner with Lingman and set pieces are a key threat for us. Kasper Vido hits the woodwork. Oh, he's still winning them even at this level. But that one is a whisker away. 25 gone. You feel like we have to score these because one all isn't going to be enough as they've got a goal kick with Scuffit, the Italian. Long ball downfield towards the centre forward. Weyberg wins the header to Granath. Cuts inside to Vidal. Time in possession. He can play into midfield here with Almajed and Lingman, the goal scorer. Middle of the centre circle. Goes forward to Vanden Herx. A clever ball. Holds up well for Tahar Ali. Had a quiet few months, but just coming back into form now. And he gives it to Almajed. Lingman to Vanden Herx. To Tahar Ali. Right on cue. You bet he's coming back into form. 2-1 Helsingborg, Tahar Ali with the strike. And we really needed that because we were starting to get bogged down. Half an hour gone, 2-1 on the night. But it's an Applewell free kick straight away. Wonderful delivery again. Vidal heads away, but it's kept in by Danilo on the right-hand side. Finds his man, gets it back from him. Towards the byline he goes. Crosses into the front post. Good block. Lingman clears it downfield. It's a clinging on job at the minute. 10 minutes to the break. We've been the better side, but 2-1. Probably a fair scoreline. Gotta say, at the start of this match, I would have definitely taken being ahead in any circumstance. So, if we can take a lead back to Cyprus, I'm not going to complain. But, I would say it's risky. They're probably going to grow into this. As Hendrickson picks it up in the middle. To Granath. Back to Vidal. Certainly not had the same dominance we did in the last round against Tanava, the Slovakians. As it comes out to Granath on the right. In towards Lerpa. Is he onside? It's gone in. But is it going to count? It does. I'm a little bit surprised by that. I can't lie to you. Willem Lerper gets the goal. He's had a really good game. I'm not sure it should have stood though. What is surprising me though, with the side that the visitors have got, we've seen it on paper. They're all real players. They're all pretty much better than ours. Is that we're, we're so comfortable. We're creating so many chances. Tactically, I'm not sure why they're playing what seems to be a glorified 4-4-2. It really isn't working because we're dominating in the middle as Hendrickson finds Lingman. Through ball to Vanden Herk. Oh, it's getting embarrassing. We are 4-1 up against a side that is clearly better on paper. I really don't understand it. The tactic is baffling. But at the moment, 
The European run continues and my word do we need this financially and to make up for the weekend result as here's Hendrickson in the centre circle to Kasper Vidal. Up to Hendrickson again. Through ball towards Lerper. Knocks it down but it's straight to Morales who's now playing centre midfield. Try and work that one out. Out to Pele on the left hand side. He's got two in the middle if he can find them. We've got numbers back though. Doesn't matter because the cross is perfect. Pits out Berglaud but he puts it over the bar. We'll take it. It stays 4-1. And I think we can make some substitutions because Tersic struggling at left back. We've got no replacement there. In fact, I'm not even going to make the subs because we need to have the backup team strong for the weekend. So we don't have the same eventuality as we did last week. So I'm going to leave them as late as possible. Now we're getting some really tired legs. We can do it just to prevent injuries. So Lingman will be replaced by Valencia. We're going to take off Willem Lerper for Victor Lundberg. And I'm going to bring on Sivis for Granath at right back. Because with the substitute suspended at the weekend, Granath is going to have to play 90 again. Out for a corner kick. It stays 4-1. Can we create anything else? Because if we can win by more, we're definitely through. Really surprised by Applewell. Really disappointed by their performance. But that takes nothing away from ours. Expected goals of over three. Awful defensive display from the visitors. And Helsingborg. I mean, we've won by more than we did in the last game. And this one was far, far more difficult on paper. So let's tell everyone it's good work. Get the game off camera out of the way. It'll be a rotated side for that one to save everyone for next week. Because if we can get to the Europa Conference group stages, this save will change forever. Sorry, I am coming back a couple of hours early because deadline day coincides with the Applewell match. We'll talk about some of the signings and stuff that have gone on in the week in the meantime. But one of my favourite football players has just had a bid made for them by Andreas Grankfist, our director of football. Now, he's 35. He's not going to be mobile. He's not going to be that useful for that long. But if Tom Huddleston is willing to join this football club, forget the stamina, forget the pace, look at the passing, look at the vision. Do I have to consider it? I mean, he's hit me right in my soft spot here. I am not sure that I'm going to be able to say no to that. As bad as the move is for the club, you're going to have to bear with me because if this gets through, I might have my hands tied just by my own love for the player. I need help here because I'm not thinking clearly. I need to go and show you the transfer work first just so I can regather my thoughts because Tom Huddleston is too much of a lure at the minute even though it's screaming in my head that it's the wrong thing for the club. We look at the transfer history. We've already got one centre midfielder in. Alex Lopez did join the club in the end. Missed a penalty on debut. What a start for him. But he's a very solid player. He's slightly better than Huddleston overall. In terms of outs... We have now let Anton Nilsson and Eric Borgström leave the club on loan. We were also suggested to consider getting Victor Blix back from his loan spell. But the positive of this is back up right winger for next season. We've definitely got one there and can cover right back too. The issue though is that another centre midfielder is leaving the club. That's Rasmus Johnson. So he had an offer from Melbourne Victory for about 60 grand. He's accepted it. It looks like he's going if the work permit goes through. He's 32 years of age. But I can't justify replacing him with this, can I? Look, he's one of my favourite players. I would love to have him. But I know it's the wrong thing for the club. And we've always said we have to be realistic. So as much as it pains me, if it had been till the end of this year, I might have done it. But for a year and a half, I can't make him one of my highest paid players. I cannot do it. Tom Huddleston, he won't be joining. I'm very sorry, Tom. Well, fitness test time as we focus on the football. We've turned down another bid at the end of the day, or Andreas Grankfist agreed terms with Farfan, but we're not going to sign him. He's a left back from the US, but not as good as the two we've got. If I show you the schedule quickly, we had a more friendly league game on paper at the weekend. Sirius were the side. We beat them 1 0 with an Espen Garnas header, and Alex Lopez should have scored a late penalty too. Got to say, Netta buying that game, absolutely phenomenal. But this is the big one. 4-1 up, surprisingly, against Applewell. We know they're the better side on paper. We know they've got bags of quality. But what are they going to produce today? Let's go and pick our 11, head into the second leg. Same 11 that played last week. The right wing has a high match load because Lerper came on for Granath at the weekend as they tried to spread the load and the match fitness over the right back position. Sivis is on the bench today if we need him, though. So with the same team, with a 4-1 aggregate lead, a remarkable turn up in the first leg. Let's see if we can hold on and make it to the final qualifying round 
from just two games from European group stage football. This Europa Conference could be the saver for teams and leagues like this. And with the exception of Grana, it's all changed from the weekend as well, as it's a very similar side for Apoel. Surely they're not setting up the same at home. They can't go for a flat 4-4-2 and just play into our hands. We'll see how it pans out during the game, but I'm expecting more from them today. We've seen they're the better side on paper. Well, it's a free kick for Helsingborg early on. They look like they're set up in a 4-2-3-1 this time, which is a slightly better shape. And they have had the better start, but we've got possession with Tersic to Almajed. And the work might already be done at 4-1 if we can keep the ball well, as Ali finds Hendrickson. Inside the opposition half, goes back to Vidal in a centre circle. Almajed, who, no matter what happens, the assistant never puts him in his first choice 11. Gives it to Lingman and Almajed again. Lingman finds Hendrickson. Inside to Tahar Ali. He's got support, but he's cut inside. He's running into traffic. Finds Lerper. Got Hendrickson with him. It's a very wide pitch and we're playing narrow. Though Granath is allowed on the overlap. To the back post to Tahar Ali. Down to Lucas Lingman. Oh, he's becoming an absolute superstar, this guy. Lucas Lingman makes it 1-0 again. It's 5-1 on aggregate. And surely we're through. But for those of you that have looked at the Applewell team with me, you'll have no idea how it's this easy. As it's a corner kick for our hosts who desperately need to get back into this game. Headed away but they've still got pressure on as it's through on the left hand side. Cut across the box, Tersic heads off the line. Tahar Ali can bring it away but they've committed so many forward to try and get back into it. But look at the space he's got to run into. Runs past one, dawdles past a second, puts in Anthony Vandenhoek. And while on the pitch, I'm thrilled. We're playing absolutely brilliantly. It is baffling to me. That Applewell were this bad. We've looked at the team. They're better than us in almost every position. How on earth is this happening? Because it's not even a fitness issue here. As Almajed, again, we're camped in their half. Lingman to Vanden Herk. Into Lerper. Granath overlapping. Lerper again can shoot from the edge of the box. The flex up and into the keeper's hands. Scuff it, probably the best keeper of the two squads. But not able to keep this score respectable. As they're playing out with Lundemo and Silva. To Morales, who again is in centre midfield in a holding role nonetheless. As Pele on the left. Chance to run down the line. He beats Granath the first time. And again, can he get the delivery right? There's hardly anyone up in the box. But the one that is, is Burlgaard. And he puts it in the back of the net. A goal in both legs for him. 2-1 on the night. 6-2 on aggregate. No panic yet. But a slight concern because we didn't defend the box well. As Weber gets the ball from a short goal kick. A goal, I guess, would just calm us down again after that. But it should be pretty comfortable anyway. If you're losing from 6-1 on aggregate, you've got to ask yourself some real questions. As Tahar Ali finds Vandenhoek over the top to Lerper who beats the fullback. Got support from Granath but crosses himself. Headed away as far as Hendrickson. Lerper again on the right side of the box. Gets to the byline. Tricks are out. It's into Lingman. Shots blocked. And it's away as far as Tizianis. He finds Silva, hoofs downfield, and it stays 2-1. But Apoel, really poor performance, and Helsingborg comfortably going through. We couldn't really ask for much more at half-time. It's been easy, and that's the thing I find annoying. I can understand it when you're in the Builder Nation or one club saves, because you're talking about leagues that aren't loaded, players that aren't there, they're greyed out. Here, we've just gone 3-1 up with Weyberg, simple knockdown from the corner by Vidal. But this is a team of all real players that are all better than the ones we've got, give or take. And they're getting battered. It's 7-2 on aggregate. Kevin Morales is playing well out of position. Jean Matt is forward now, but not really making a contribution. And this is getting a little bit frightening as Pele skins Granath. That's a bit better. Good save by the keeper. It falls for Beregard. And he puts it in. 3-2 on the night. Looks like we're getting a bit of a, a thriller to finish off this European tie. As we're 10 gone in the second half, we're back with a throw on the right-hand side in our own half. Granaf and Lerfer play a 1-2, and Almajed gets it up to Lingman. Got support, but goes forward, carries the ball, beats his man, lays it into Vandenhoek. It's a good save from Scuffett. He's having a good second half so far, but Helsingborg continuing to have a big attacking threat. And how many more league games are we going to have to suffer? Because at the moment, Thursday night football is set to continue. The corner is headed straight into the arms of the keeper. And it stays 3-2 on the night, 7-3 on aggregate. Well, a quarter of the game to go. We're back with Lingman again as Lerper knocks it down for Ali. It's hoofed away downfield, but only as far as Weyberg. And he can carry the ball forward to Lucas Lingman. Been the star on the pitch yet again as it's back to Weyberg and Almajed. Into Ali and Lerper and Vandenhoek. 
and that's a penalty kick. It's an absolutely brain dead challenge. It's stupid. And it should be 4 2. Because up steps Hendrickson. Regular penalty taker sends the keeper the wrong way. 4 2 on the night. We're going to give Granaf a rest at right back. He'll be replaced by Civis. We're 20 to go. We're just going to enjoy it because this has been easy. Well, a chance for a couple more changes. Lingman on a yellow and struggling. We'll bring on Netabai as a reward for his brilliant performance in the week. And Lerper on the right wing, not doing the best either. And puffing a little bit. So on comes Lundberg, who was wanting to be sold. But now he's playing in big European qualifiers. And he's playing a key part as well. So it's a long ball forward from Upperwell. Headed away and then cleared as far as Ali. Holds the ball up. Goes back to Weyberg. No pressure on the back four. They're sitting so many behind the ball. As Weber picks it up again. Through ball to Vandenhoek. I mean, we're just cutting them open at ease. The tactics they're employing must be absolutely horrendous. Well, a quiet five minutes, but we're back in the final ten. As Civis and Lundberg, the subs, combine down the right wing. Lundberg eventually crosses. Netterby can't get there. Would have been all three involved in that one. Though he does get it from Tursic. Delivers to Lundberg. Good save. Scuff it again. I tell you what, he's the one man that's covered himself in glory. He's conceded eight goals in these two legs and he's probably been their best player. As Hendrickson gets it in, maybe that's harsh on the striker and Anani can bring it away. Scuff it, still their second best player. I mean, it's baffling. And there we go, 4-2 on the night. We've scored eight on aggregate and it's against a side who are better than us on paper. I don't get it. I really don't. Let's see who we get in the final qualifier. Is it going to be an actual test or is it going to flatter to deceive again? AIK, they've got through as well. Well, we've drawn Turkish side Konya Spor in the last qualifier for the Europa Conference. They've got players on 20 and 25 grand a week, respectively. They've got three or four stars, but a few average players again. Probably a similar strength to Apoel with one or two bits of star quality. Let's have a look at when that tie starts. It should be the very next week. And that's what we're going to come back for again, because despite the fact we're going to have to sacrifice the AIK game, they're going to be in Europe too. We have got a chance against the odds of making the European group stages. Not because leagues aren't loaded, not because there aren't better teams than us, because we're winning against very good ones. So if you're looking forward to seeing how we get on, please do chuck a thumbs up on the video. Let me know what you thought of the transfer work, the two games we played today. And what do you think of this European run? Because you've seen the Apple L players like I have. I've shown you most of the stars I don't understand how we've beaten them so comfortably. And have you experienced the same in your build nation or builder club saves? If you want to stay up to date and find out if we can reach the group stages in a couple of days time, subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on for daily FM22 content. We're back with Hemel Hempstead tomorrow, a big transfer deadline day there. You can find a link to the latest season of that in the eye above, as well as the Twitch channel, football podcast and merchandise store too. But I'll be back here in two days time as we face Turkish opposition in the Europa Conference. A win over two legs and we're in the group stages. Can we do it? I'll see you there to find out. <laughs>